Revelation chapter 12, verse number 11. And it identifies, and they overcame him. The him it's referring to here is the devil. And they overcame the liar and the accuser. They overcame the liar and the accuser. With the blood of the lamb. But it didn't stop there. I need you to stand on your feet right now. We're going to honor God. They didn't overcome with just the blood. The blood gives you access. What you do with the access is up to you. They overcame him with the blood of the lamb. And then it says, with the word of their testimony, they testified, they witnessed that God has been good. That testimony is a way of their prayer and their praise and their worship. Close your eyes, somebody, right now. And I want you just to testify to yourself that God has been good. God has been a way maker. God has done it. God has put food on the table. God has given me a job. God did put gas in the car. God is doing it. God is come on, testify, testify, testify. Testify, testify, testify. The devil accusing you. Put your accuser up underneath your feet in the name of Jesus. Now you can be seated. I'm giving you some good news. But 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 3 says, But if our good news be hid, it is here to them that are lost. It is they going to be lost. It says they are lost. Verse 4. In whom the God of this world. Notice the word God right there, small g. Oh, the devil bad. <laughs> He bad. The devil's a bad boy. The boy he knows how to lie and make it sound good. So much so that you might believe it if you only focus in on it. So much so that some of you believed that you were worthless. Some of you believed that you could not be changed. Some of you believed that you could not make it. But the best, the best weapon against a lie is the truth of God. God sent me to tell you that you are not worthless, but you are valuable in his eyes. God sent me to tell you that he's made a way for your escape. God sent me to tell you that he made you the head and not the tail. God sent me to tell you that you can do this. You can do this. In the world, we used to brag on ourselves. But in the church, you can brag on God. Pop your collar and brag on your God. Someone tell God, God did it. God did it. All that I am, ever will be. God did it. God brought me from a mighty long way. God did it. God did it. God, oh, hallelujah, God did it. Why did the God of this world try to blind your minds? Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, the good news of Christ, the good news of the anointed one and his anointing, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. 
God ain't stupid. He made you. He knows you. God is not asking you to transform yourself into some type of ethereal being that has no more worth on this planet. God knows that you are flesh. He made you flesh. But when you receive the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, here's what happens. You become what the world calls a supernatural being. You become something entirely different. Hallelujah. And the world will look at you and wonder all the stuff that's coming at you. Why did you lose your mind? You didn't lose your mind because the God that is in you, the God that's on you, the God that walked with you, the God that whispered to you, the God that was right there with you in the midnight hour, he would let you lose your mind. In fact, God says, I look over my water to perform it. Ephesians chapter 6, you need to see this. Ephesians chapter 6, Sister Sando, you need to see this. Sister Jasmine, you need to see this. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Brother Rick, you need to see this. Sister Moses, you need to see this. Barbara, you need to see this. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I got to turn this up. Oh. Only believe. All things are possible. If you only, only believe. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, look up. Look at someone next to you, nod your head. Tell them, finally, my brother, my sister. See, what, what, what you did right there. Technically, here's what happened, Pastor Gail. The Bible tells us, hallelujah, I believe it's the 23rd Psalms, that he anointed my head with oil so much so that my cup runneth over. By the way, the anointing of God is so powerful and so much that your body cannot contain it all. It was not designed to contain it all. That's why he says that out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. You got to give it out. You got to minister this thing to somebody around you. You got to create a puddle of the anointing around you. So everywhere you step, hallelujah, somebody, you step in the anointing. Everywhere you walk, you're walking with the anointing. Mm, I hear you, Jesus. Finally, my brethren, be strong. Notice what it says. In the Lord, in the Lord, in the Lord. And in the power of his might. I hear Jesus. I'm trying to convince someone here. God can do it. Madam Queen, God can do it. God can do it. Dean Constance, God can do it. Deacon's right. God can do it. I don't care if you're living in Tennessee, living in Mississippi, God can do it. God can do it. I need somebody to testify with me right now is there anything too hard for the lord is there anything too hard for the lord say it all finally 
Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. There's a poem, I do not know who wrote it. Deacon Wright, can, can y'all still see me? I don't know who wrote this song or wrote this poem. But I believe it, it's called Footsteps. And this believer, it could be you. It could be you walking with the Lord didn't he say I'll walk with you I'll talk to you I'll let you know I'll hear you Jesus your father may not want you but I want you you may have broken your mother's heart but God says I still want you Walking with God and talking with God. I know I'm mixing something, but Elder Josiah in Zechariah chapter 3, somewhere around verse 1, 2, and 3, it identifies and that the high priest was standing before God and Zechariah was there looking at him. And he was a high priest, but uh, hallelujah, he was dressed and identified in Filthy garments, just filthy garments. Let me help you with that. He says, filthy, who am I talking to? Filthy garments. Sometimes, even though you may be saved, you may be dressed wrong. You may be in filthy garments, wallowing around in your own filth. When you dig deep, and you dig deep into the set of scripture that identifies that that filth may have been human excrement. Uh, hey, he stained himself up. Uh, have you stained yourself up uh, with what you've done and where you've been and how you did it and you keep going back to the old vomit? Uh, have you stained yourself up? Uh, but God is telling me to remind you that he still called you. He still called you. God is telling me to remind you that he died for you. He laid his life down for you. But he didn't stay there. God is telling me to remind you that hallelujah, where he was dead, don't let no one lie to you. He did die. He did die. He did die. When he was dead, he walked around, hallelujah, inside of hell. And he said, get your bags back. Get your bags back. Get your bags back. Who am I talking to? Someone needs to pack their bags because God is in your hell with you. And then he led captivity captive. What God did back then, he's ready to do for you today. He cares so much for you, for you, for you, that he's dealt with your sins before you got saved. And he'll deal with any sin since you've been saved. He'll give you a change of clothes. Oh, hallelujah. And Madam Queen, he walked with God. Talked to God. And he looked back and he saw two sets of footprints and he was so excited. He saw how God was with him through the mess. Can you look back on your life and see how God has been with you through your mess? He said, I will never leave you or I will never forsake you. But then he looked down and he saw one set of footprints and he got upset. 
And God is telling me to tell you, just believe him. See, 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 the devil looks back and sees that stuff too. And he tries to lie to you. God left you. You've done so much. God left you. Done so much. God no longer wants you. But God told me to remind you who said it. The liar. That's the only thing he knows how to do is lie. The poem goes on to say God comforted the person that was with him and said, the two sets of footprints you said were right. You saw were right. That was me and you. But then when it switched to one step, God says, don't get it twisted. I was carrying you. You couldn't make it by yourself. I carried you. You couldn't do it alone. I carried you. You almost lost it. I carried you. Your enemies were right against you. I carried you. I carried you. Somebody say with me, God carried me. 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 Come on, come on, come on, somebody. God carried me. God carried me. I'm not by myself. God carried me. I'm not by myself. God carried me. Oh, Sarah Makaya. He tells you to put on the full arm of God. Put it on, put it on, put it on. This armor of God has been especially constructed and given to you because it's been endowed with the anointing of God. This armor of God will allow you to stand against the wiles of the liar. He reminds you that you're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but you're actually wrestling against principalities. You're wrestling against powers. You're wrestling against the rulers of darkness of this world. You're wrestling against spiritual wickedness in high places. Turn in your Bibles, please. As you're turning, say, come on, Lord Jesus. Come, 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 Lord Jesus. 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 Invite him in. 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 Colossians chapter 3. I will start reading at verse number 2. Let me help you. If you cannot find it, that's okay. Look in the table of contents of your Bible. Go into the New Testament. Colossians chapter 3. I'll be reading from verse 2 through verse 10. Um, the translation I am reading from right now is from the God's, called God's Word translation. Verse two, keep your mind on things above, not on worldly things. Uh-oh. See, I gotta speak plain to you. I have to speak plain to you. Get your mind out the gutter. Get your mind out of the gutter. 
He saved you from the guttermost to the uttermost. Keep your mind on things above, not on worldly things. You have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Verse 4, Christ is your life. Do you see that? Christ is your life. Let me take that a step further. It says Christ is your life. Let me explain that. The anointed one. And the anointing is your life. He anointed you to be the head and not the tail. He anointed you. So much so. That the enemy is really afraid that you may grab this truth and walk in it. Verse 4, Christ is your life. When he appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. Verse 5, therefore, put to death whatever is worldly in you. Your sexual sin, perversion, passion, lust, and greed, which is the same thing as worshiping wealth. Verse 6, it is because of these sins that God's anger comes on those who refuse to obey him. Do you see that? Let, 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 let me dig deep into that for a second. Here's what, get God, here's what gets God so angry. If someone messed with one of my children, uh-oh, I'm in it. Some kind of way. I'm in it. I'm in it. I'm in it. I'm in it. When the devil messes with you and you succumb to the lie, God's heart is broken because you're living beneath where God wants you to be. And God is angry. God is angry with you throwing your anointing away, with you throwing your opportunities away. Verse 7 says, you used to live that kind of sinful life. Verse 8, I found myself in verse 8. To also get rid of your anger. Why is it that we as saints sometimes we're so angry? Mm. Get rid of your anger. Hot tempers, hatred, cursing, obscene language, and all similar sins. Don't lie to each other. You've gotten rid of the person you used to be and the life you used to live. And you've become a new person. This new person is continually renewed in the knowledge, in knowledge to be like its creator. I'm coming in, I'm coming in. I hear you, Jesus. Real quick, real quick. Go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, which puts a capstone on that part right there. You need to see this. Romans chapter 8. You're seeing this for yourself. You're seeing this for yourself. You're seeing this for yourself. Romans chapter 8, verse number 6. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be carnally minded is death. To be carnally minded is death. Whoever I'm talking to, needs to talk to your God and says I'm tired of being fooled. I'm no longer going to walk as a carnal Christian. I'm going to walk in the spirit. I'm going to walk in the power of Jesus.
Romans 10, 17 says, So that faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Let me help you. I'm coming, church. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. But this is too important. Find Hebrews. New Testament Hebrews. Chapter 4. I hear you, Lord. Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 2. It reads, For unto us was the good news preached, or the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But this word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. The gospel is supposed to profit you. The gospel is supposed to profit you. The gospel, the good news is supposed to profit you. But why is not profit? Why did it not profit them? Because it's not being mixed with faith. Faith is this, not just a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The faith right here is talking about a moral conviction of the truthfulness of God, a moral conviction of the truthfulness of God. And then it's saying, it's identifying this, that your Bible is the faith system. So then faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. The Bible codifies the faith system. That is why the Bible is so precious. It's why the Bible is so precious. The faith system is the bridge between man and God. The bridge between you and where you are and where God wants you to be. It's the faith system. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Stand on your feet, please. We're getting ready to honor God. And get ready to honor yourself. Just make note of this. James 4 and 7 says... Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Then resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Submit yourself to God. People have preached and told you, oh, just resist the devil, he'll flee from you. Go on and resist him if you want to without the word of God. The devil look at you and beat you up. But the Bible says submit yourselves therefore to God. Put yourself in a position where you tell your God, I've given you all that I have. I'm yours, Lord. Everything I have, everything I've got, everything I'm not, I'm yours, Lord. Close your eyes. We read the scripture, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walking about seeking whom he may devour. Verse 9 says, whom resist steadfast in the faith. Uh oh I hear you Lord I hear you I hear you I hear you Lord stand fast in the faith elder come down here please look at this y'all see it so y'all if you need to sit down sit down God knows okay look at this grab that don't let go you see that? He's not letting it go. 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 Why? Because in the word is his health. In the word is his strength. In the word is his deliverance. In the world, we live. In the world, we move. In the world, we have our being. The devil can't handle this. Hold this up. Devil can't handle it. 
devil can't handle it. Devil can't handle it. Devil can't handle it. Devil can't handle it. Devil can't handle it. The devil, the devil can't handle it. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Step back here, daughter. Devil can't handle it. She came for a blessing. Elder, go up and turn that up. You've received too much from the devil. He has lied to you. Even tried to make her think she was worthless. Some of this stuff you bought and you actually believed it to the point where you walked in it. I'm worthless. But your God, Elder, come hold this for me. Your God did this for you. He pulled back the curtains of eternity. Step through for you. He said, look at me. They wanted to see the lion of the tribe of Judah. They're in a big convention. Someone screamed out, I need to see the lion of the tribe of Judah. And out walked a lamb. He's been crucified. He's telling me today he was bruised for your iniquities. He was wounded for your transgressions. And by his stripes, you are healed in the name of Jesus. Pastor Gil, stand behind her. Your job today is believe God. Do you believe him? You already know what I'm going to say. We don't fear COVID. We respect it. When God starts moving, watch God do what he do. Someone say, do it, Lord Jesus. Daughter, go and take the mask down. Take your mask down. Close your eyes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Wish y'all could see the Holy Ghost all on this young lady. Just worship your God and thank him. That's right, that's right. Let it go. Yeah, yeah, there it go. There it go. Just let it go. Let it come. come on. Come on. Come on. Worship. That's right. That's right. That's right. Now just open up your mouth and just say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just make the noise. Just make don't make the noise. Just make the noise. Yeah, yeah. Just let it go. Come on, faster. Fast, yeah. Let faster, fast. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let it go. Yeah, yeah. yeah, come on, come on, come on. There it is. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry about what it sounds like. Worship your God. There's no time. There's no time. Worship. 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 Thank you, Lord. 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 
Let's go. Come, 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 come. Put your hand on her belly. In the name of Jesus. Just let it flow now. Let it flow. In the name of just let it flow. Come on. Let it in the name of Jesus. Let it flow. Let it, oh, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. We now break through. We break through that firewall that's been trying to separate you from your God in the name of Jesus. You're asking, is it really possible? God is telling me to tell you it is possible. In the name of Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus. Tell her to worship. Tell her to worship. He's got to worship. Just got to worship. Just got to worship. Just got to worship. Just got to worship. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Get her up. Get her up. Get her up. God's not done. Hallelujah. 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 You've been there before. It's not your first time in church. You've been there before. God's not done with you. God is not done with you. God is tired of you coming so far and then leaving empty. God is saying no more. Empty no more. Empty no more. Out of your belly are going to flow the rivers of living water in the name of Jesus. I'm going to lay hands on you in the name of Jesus. And when I lay hands on you, you're going to worship and praise your God. Hallelujah. God's going to deal with that back situation in the law in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. There it go. There it go. There it go. There it go. Dean County, come. Quick, 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 quick. Put your hands on her stomach. Just put your hands on it. In the name of Jesus. Let it flow. Let it flow. There it go. 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 Yeah, don't worry about what it sounds like. Just make the noise. Just make the noise. Just make the noise. Don't worry about what it sounds like. Just make the noise. That's right. That's right. Come on. That's right. It's your time. It's your time. Don't worry about what it sounds like. Oh. Open up your eyes, daughter. Let me tell you something. Step back, Dean Connie. The word says this. With stammering lips and another tongue, I will speak to my people. Okay? We are now... separating you from traditions that have bound you in the name of Jesus. On the day of Pentecost, they were all together in one place on one accord. Hmm? The Bible makes us to know that cloven tongues like as a fire came down upon them. Hallelujah. Would you mind reading a scripture for me out loud? Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. Is that big enough or you need some glasses? I would need glasses. Read it out loud. And suddenly mm -hmm. there came a sound from heaven <laughs> as a rushing mighty wind. Uh-huh. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What happened? Uh-huh. Come and on. Then and then there appeared to be the fine tongue uh -huh. uh -huh. as a fire. And what happened? What happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What happened? What happened? And, they were all uh, and, and, and did what? And it began to speak. And what? With other tongues. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Come on, come on. And they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. You may not understand what you are saying, but here's what's going on. It's the Spirit of God which comes in you. See, you've been wanting to talk to God a long time and give him some things. Hallelujah. Get some things off of your chest. And Christ is cut. You've been wanting to give him some things you don't even have words for. And God says, I'm going to change your language so now you can talk to me. All you want, close your eyes and worship your God. No more English now. In the name of Jesus, let it go. That's right, that's right. Stammering lips. Come on, let it go. In the eyes, that's right. Don't worry about what it sounds like. Let it go. That's right. Come on, praise it. In the name of Jesus, that's right. Let it go. Let it go. There it go. Yeah, that's right. Shut, shut up. Call your name.
Worship him. It's your time. Worship him. Let it go. Keep on. You fought many battles to get to this point. This is your moment. Your time. Your time with your God. Don't stop. Don't stop. Keep it going. Keep it going. Keep it going. Keep it going. Now, spirit of prophet, subject to the prophet, open up your eyes. What happened to you? Something that you read. And they began to do what? <laughs> and what? In other tongues. Uh huh. Did that happen to you? <laughs> Were you talking in English to your God? <laughs> And according to the word, pull that Bible out again. Acts 2. Verse 4. Read it. Verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. Oh! <laughs> Did something happen to you? Yeah, something happened to me. What happened to you? The Spirit came over me. Mm -hmm. And you began to do what? Speak with other tongues. And according to the word, they were all filled with what? The Spirit. <laughs> they were all filled with the Spirit. Now, look at this. Give me that, give me that cloth, Pastor Gill. Give me that cloth. <clears throat> because our words mean something. Elders, stand up here. Pastor Gill, stand up here. Let's turn around right here. Turn around, face her, face her. Coming on is this. And that's beautiful. You like that. You like that. Uh -huh. God said, I'll never leave you. You done felt by yourself for so long. Pastor Gary, take this off, put this on her. You have felt by yourself for so long. You've done things just to feel something. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Hallelujah, dear Jesus. But today, God elevated your experience. He says, I no longer want to just be on you. I want to be in you. And they were all filled. He didn't say, I came on you. He filled you. So whatever was on you, he now got in you. <laughs> in you. This is what you've been waiting on. This is what you travel all this way for. You fought through hell and high water to get to Grace Christian Fellowship so you can be filled. According to the word, what happened to you? With what? With the Spirit. Give God a hand clap. Give God a hand clap. Come on. Give God a hand clap. Give God a hand clap. Daughter, we may be seated. I just need two more minutes of y'all's time. I just need two more minutes of y'all's time. Where are my glasses go? Thank you. Thank you. 
No, not yet, son. Uh, I need that microphone. I need that microphone. Hallelujah. Oh, I know you got to wipe it off. Praise God. As you're bringing it. Thank you. Oh, uh, I, I need to clear this up right now. Don't you dare. Don't you dare look at Pastor Brock as if he's some type of angel or something like that. I'm a leather cat. With the same issues and foils and tribulations just like you. What you're looking at is a man that's trying to allow God to use him. And I'm here to tell you, if God can use me, God can use you. I'm going to read this. Our confession, covenant of confession number eight, covenant of confession number nine. And we'll be finished with that today. Next week, God willing, we go to number 10. But I want you to repeat this after me. Our covenant of confession number eight. Now, by the way, the way it's titled, where I have it written in here, Sister Sando, and I'm not going to do it. But it says, after we say this, you can drop the mic and then walk away. <laughs> I remember I saw President Obama do that. <laughs> he dropped the mic. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anyhow, covenant confession number eight. Repeat after me. Jesus is Lord. God raised him from the dead. I therefore adhere to. I trust in. And I rely on this truth. Because this truth is God's word and God's word is the truth. Number nine, covenant confession number nine. Repeat after me, please. I believe the word of God. Oh, come on, come on now, come on. He's showing you too much. See, here's, here's, here's literally what I do. Some way, shape, form, or fashion, I may be going to the gym for a hard workout, but I listen to my covenants first every morning. Because the word of God fights this crazy stuff that tries to attack me throughout the day. I believe the word of God. God will back up his word in my life. I am submitting all areas of my life to the will and purpose of God. I will not be ashamed. God will not let me down. This is not a wish. Neither is this wishful thinking. This is the truth. If I embrace this truth, and do the word, then God, then God, then God will do great things in me. God will do great things on me. And God will do great things through me. In the name of Jesus. I don't apologize no more. Sometimes, Sister Sando, I gotta dance.
in the world, my wife would laugh at me and say, I don't have no, no rhythm. She, didn't, she, she just couldn't count my rhythm. <laughs> but when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul not just my hands but my soul not just my lips but my soul not just my feet but my inner post being cries out all oh, praises hallelujah I thank you for being with me If this message in this church has been a blessing to you, communicate with us. Let us know. If you want to partner with this ministry, you want to send an offering, send it. Today is Sunday, tomorrow we are distributing food again because we feed the hungry. Hallelujah. You can help. You can help. Your offering, the word says that where your treasure is that identifies where your heart is well you just told the devil with your offering where your heart is I'm giving it to the Lord hallelujah who am I talking to <laughs> I'm giving it to the Lord give it to him give it to him give it to him the scripture says you can't beat God giving. The more you give, the more he gives unto you. Hallelujah. He's there to support all of your needs. And through your giving, guess what he will do? He will rebuke the devourer. I heard you, Deacon Noni. Oh, you preached that word this morning in your prayer. He will literally rebuke the devourer for your sakes. Hallelujah. You can join us on Wednesdays in our vision class. Vision class is our way of saying Bible study. You can join us on Facebook, live, on YouTube, or on our conference call, I trust that our engineers will get that information up so they can see it. And as usual, we'll be back here next Sunday. Pastor Gale, it is my intent to go to covenant number 10. We've done eight and nine now, twice. Covenant 10, praise God. What's your name, daughter? Sister Jessica. Sister Jasmine. Now, I'm being very, I'm, I'm breaking tradition right now. I'm breaking tradition. <laughs> Don't you love Sister Jasmine, Patrick Gill? <laughs> that girl's sharp. <laughs> she's sharp. And, and, she, and, and, she, and she's sharp. She sharp. Said, That's okay. That's okay. Just come on with it. <laughs> come on. <laughs> <laughs> there's more there's more and it is not just following orders 
but the baptism in the precious name of Jesus. is a part of your new birth. You both have been born of the spirit, that part, but now you need to be born of the water to complete your new birth. Now, let me, can, can, can I break another rule? Elder Josiah, I'm gonna break the rule, I don't care, bruh. What they gonna do, disfellowship me, bruh? <laughs> What they gonna do? Your wife, my precious daughter-in-law, when I looked at her this morning, it looked like she was pregnant to me. But Deacon Cameron, the baby has not come out yet. But just because the baby wasn't born yet doesn't mean the baby is still not part of your family. The conception has occurred. And the final step is for that baby to be born. To come out that womb. There is another step for you. Elder, I need you to teach Sunday school next week. And I want you to teach on baptism. Take this and throw the traditions away and teach what the word says. Sister Jessica, I don't know how you can do it, but you need to be here. You need to be here. Break the rules and get here for you. Here's what I'm doing. It says, teach them, then baptize them, and then teach them some more. So in order to qualify for baptism, it's not just because you have a good feeling, it's because you're being taught. And now you know. What are you going to find out? The power in the name of Jesus. What are you going to find out? The power in what he did. What are you going to find out? Huh? The power in the blood of Jesus. What are you going to find out? Huh? Hallelujah. What God does and what this means when you go down in his name and come up. You need to know this. Can you be here next week? I think now I was, I was upstairs studying, but I think you were here during Sunday school. Get here for Sunday school, because he's going to teach this thing. He's a teacher. He's going to teach this thing. Sister, Sister Jasmine, I know you're going to hang out with us tomorrow, so you've been doing. Hallelujah. We love it when you're there. I'm very serious. Very serious. God's advancing you quickly. But if at all possible, try to be here for Sunday school so you can learn this. Amen. And who's this young lady you have over here? That's mom? Mama? Is that you, mama? Oh, my goodness. You. She said, young lady, who are you talking to? <laughs> you hallelujah God is still working a work for you God is still working a work for you I can tell see you're, you're hungry for the word you may not know where everything is but you look at she's going through she, I'm going to find this scripture leave me alone I said leave me alone I'm going to find this scripture and she'd be looking hallelujah I thought you had left us and went on back to 
to Jamaica or something, but you're here. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that you are here with us today. Amen. Amen. All minds clear. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to receive the offering. I'm going to pray and dismiss us. And after I dis I'm and in that prayer, I will be blessing the offering already. Okay. Deacon Constance, where would you would you rather be back there or up here? Deacon Constance will be back there in the back with the offering plate. Please take a moment and get your offering together. Okay. Now, please don't be ashamed if all you have is a dime. Even those online, get your offering together. You can mail it to us. Between Deacon Wright and Elder Josiah, they'll get the information up on where you can mail your offering to. You can mail, you can get the, get the offering in and claim God at his word. He says, I will, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Aren't some of you tired of, you're getting paid one day, you don't know where your money is all gone the next day. Like you put your money in a bag of holes. That's the scripture, by the way. It sounds good, but that's the scripture. Invest in the Lord. We also have, uh, thank you for reminding me, Cash App. What is that? Uh, you know, Pastor Gail's laughing at me. She should, because she sent me the information up here. For those of you that need to know, our Cash App is dollar sign Grace Christian CIN. You can give by Cash App. So even if you are in, uh, in Texas or, or Tennessee or Nebraska, hallelujah, I'm, I'm, I'm counting Nebraska by faith. Louisiana. Go to your smartphone, cash app, dollar sign, Grace Christian CIN. Hallelujah. You don't have to put it in the mail. You can do it electronically just like that. For those of you that have given on cash app, and, I, and there is one young, I will not call her name, but I want to thank you all for any amount that you've given this, this church helping to keep the doors of the church open, the word going out, people being fed, families being helped. Oh, Pastor Gail's telling me, PayPal. You can give by PayPal. Go to the website, give by PayPal. In the old days, all we had to do was put it in the uh, offering plate, but now there's all these electronic things. This is Jessica trying her best not to laugh. PayPal, Cash App, you can give. And you're taking God at his word. All minds clear. Deacon Constance, you had a, go ahead. 